guys, welcome back to the OVC YouTube channel. Today, Sester is with us, going to tell us about his kibbutz experience. How are you doing? Ah, good in yourself. Great, thank you. I was hoping you can tell us what were your feelings when you first arrived at the airport when you're on your way to your kibbutz? I was, um, I was very nervous, you know. I was in a place that I, I didn't know the language. I mean, you can't even read. <laughs> The language there it's uh, the hebrew um uh, letter the alphabet and everything up there um yeah but uh, it was really easy to find the place and and once i got to the to the, the kibbutz headquarters um the people there were very friendly and they made me feel that easy you know they, they helped me a lot and um yeah then i had to travel quite far i think i traveled five hours to get to my kibbutz way in the north uh uh it, it, of Israel and Kibbutz Baram and um, okay. yeah, once I got there I instantly felt alone. Yeah. All right and then what did was your responsibilities or work on the Kibbutz? Uh, I was working in uh, we called it Apple Factory yeah, but it okay. was uh, it's a fr fruit packing factory um, I worked on the on the uh, production well not the production line the uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, the packing line and I just basically for the first uh, few weeks I was there all I had to do was um, stack boxes on pallets and uh, ship them out. Yeah. Okay. So now boxes of fruit, boxes of apples, keep and everything. Okay, and then what uh, what were your work hours more or less? Oof. <laughs> uh, uh, if I remember correctly yeah, I'd wake up at around uh, Seven, I think, and then uh, I'd be at work at about seven thirty. The place I was working was just down the road um, from, from uh, where I was staying. And then, yeah, I think we'd work around four two-hour shifts each day. Okay. But it was, you know, it was, it was chilled, and the people in the factory are so friendly; they make the time go by so fast. Okay, that's cool. And then, can you tell us a bit about your accommodation on the kibbutz? What was it like? Were you staying with other people that were also volunteering? Yeah, it's, well, I was used to it, you know, because I was uh, I was in the um, course, I was, you know, I was uh, in boarding uh, in mm -hmm. uh, uh, university, uh, and they, yeah, you share a, a room with the roommate. Um, if you get there, there's an open room, you'll get an open room. If the rooms are full, then you'll uh, bunk with someone. Um, yeah, and I had a really good friend uh, that I that I made from uh, Australia. His name is Nick. And uh, yeah, we bunked together for about six months together. There. He's, uh, yeah, and he, he even came to South Africa, he visited me. Uh, That's amazing. Really like that. yeah. That's so cool. So where were some of the other volunteers from? So Nick was from Australia and then you from South Africa. So I'm sure there was a wide variety of people in different cultures. I'd say almost half the people there were from two places. Half was with from South Africa and from Colombia. Mm -hmm. Like together, that's about a little bit more than 50% of the people there. Um, okay. Then, uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, Danish people, people um, other European countries too. Uh, a lot of Americans that came there, but yeah, they, most of them didn't stay too long. Most of them came there for short stints. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, then you get some Asian people, Koreans, Japanese. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, we were, it's okay, a, it's so a big mix. A lot of different people. Lots of yeah. just all around. You feel well supported while you're on your program with our partners. Yeah. You know what? Um, they 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 give you a lot of freedom there. Like they're not gonna be there like to bait you at you and, and support you with everything, you know, like when you need help, when you really need help and you've got a big problem, say with your visa or with um, uh, travel or with uh, something else, you know, like a big problem, then they, they Spare no expense. Okay. It's like to help you, you know. Well, they did, and um, yeah. But most of the time, you, they give you your freedom to make your own choices and do whatever you want. You know, as long as you bring your part and do your work, and yeah, you know, the ability to make your own experience. Okay. And then, what did you do um, in your free time? Well, the the winters they are really really cold. Um, I, we didn't go outside a lot. Uh, the, that's only for like the, the first two months I got there at the, in the beginning of January. Uh, we didn't go out a lot, but luckily when I got there, I bought a TV and an Xbox of one of the volunteers that ju uh, was just leaving. So at least we could stay in and watch movies and and, uh, and uh, play some games with all the volunteers. You know, have FIFA tournaments and things like that. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, we'd have big movie nights and nights where we'd wa- all watch series together. Then in the warmer okay. months, you know, then it, uh, that was really, really nice. Um, the people could go out and you'd, you'd go walk in the woods and go walk in the hills. Um, you'd go uh, out with the, with the residents in the kibbutz, you know, you'd go, uh, go to the, they'd invite you to the houses and then you'd go there to go have dinner or whatever. So yeah, it, it was, uh, we, we, you never don't have anything to do. Mm-hmm. And there's a bunch of the kibbutz where I was at was a really big, big one, uh, like 40 people living there. So yeah, okay. you've got a lot of people to talk to and to spend time with. All right. And then was it easy to get around in the kibbutz? Like, yeah, the kibbutz, kibbutz isn't that big. It's okay. uh, you can walk everywhere that you need to go. Okay. Um, getting out of the kibbutz is a little bit difficult sometimes, but uh, the one where I was at I had a public bus stop, and yeah. It, it, uh, add routes going to all the major cities um, uh, around. Um, so yeah, you could um, you could easily get anywhere you want. But I must say, travel travel in general in in Israel isn't that easy. Uh, it's getting better now because uh, they've changed the laws. Before you couldn't uh, travel on the Sabbath. Uh, uh, the bus services stopped, but the new government that came changed them. They, their bus is twenty four seven now. Okay, oh, that's interesting. And um, do a lot of traveling um, in your time in Israel and with your excursions from the kibbutz and stuff, where did you go? Yeah, the kibbutz took us to a lot of places. They took us to, uh, uh, I went to Jerusalem with them. We went to Tel Aviv. Uh, uh, we went to uh, to the Dead Sea. Took two, two trips there with the kibbutz actually. And uh, But the best one uh, that I, I, I unfortunately uh, didn't go on was the one to Haifa in the south. Uh, it's basically the Las Vegas of the Middle East, they say. So yeah, but that, that's a big trip that, that, that the kibbutz is organized for you too. A lot of kibbutz is uh, Okay, and then did you do any traveling on your own or with some friends outside, away from the kibbutz for that, those excursions? Yeah, I made I made some some friends, uh, um, uh, some friends from Colombia, and we mm-hmm. traveled together to uh, Turkey actually. With the money that I saved up from the kibbutz and some money that I had uh, with me uh, when I went. Okay, so that's there for Like two weeks. Yeah, yeah, like. Uh, where I was working, you, you could uh, work on off days and then you could um, build up those days and then you could use them whenever you want. For example, if you want to take a trip. Uh, mm-hmm. And I worked almost every off day that I could and uh, I made a trip to Tel Aviv twice. Or, yeah, actually I made a trip to Tel Aviv three times and I made a trip to, to Turkey for two weeks. It was really, really fun. Turkey's, and Turkey's dirt cheap. Like you, can, you don't need a, a lot of money to go there. That place is dirt cheap and it's such a nice place. Oh, that sounds so cool. That sounds fun. Eh? Would you recommend the program to other people? And um, would you do it again? Uh, yeah, I've recommended it. I have recommended it to other people. Um, definitely, the the more a lot of more people should be doing this. It's actually a really really great experience. Um, it taught me a lot. And um, but for me, I don't think I'd, I'd do it again. I'd definitely go back to go visit uh, the people okay. that I that I met there. But I felt that was my experience, and uh, yeah, that's uh, I had already had my commutes experience. Uh, but I definitely want to go back to the place where, where I work. Okay. But, uh, to see how those people are doing. Mm-hmm. What was your reasoning for choosing OVC to do your to do your program? Uh, well, I sent I sent a bunch of emails uh, to I think there's like two or three other. Uh, um, places but uh, yeah obviously just they, they just uh, gave me a lot more information and uh, okay. yeah they just were, were a lot more helpful all right how does your meals times work um do you get extra shekels to go grocery shopping um or how does that all work at the kibbutz well uh, uh there's basically two types of kibbutzes when it comes to, to the food okay there's places that pay you extra and then you have to buy your own groceries. Uh, yeah, because we met a lot of other kibbutzes there and, and talked to the people there and they say that's how they did it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and ours, it was a little bit different. We had a cafeteria and we got uh, our meals, three meals a day for free. Um, we got breakfast, lunch and, and dinner and yeah, sometimes they, they, uh, they'd have really, really nice food there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they, they uh, did pay us a salary. Uh, like, I think it's... 30 shekels a day extra 
okay. for yourself to spend, and then yeah, and then you can save that up and you know, buy stuff. And, yeah. All right. But uh, you you do get they do give you food, but you and you also get extra money. Okay. And then did you experience any culture shock or homesickness while you were there? Yeah, <laughs> I missed my mom so much. She's, but she called me. She called me like three or four times a week uh, when I was working in the factory. And then I just have my earphones on and talk to her. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it, it, uh, the culture there it's it's a little. It's not that different. It is different, but it's not that different. You know, it's it's not going to be like a big shock. Um, okay. Uh, some of the re- uh, or, or, uh, areas, uh, regions, yeah, that are a little bit more traditional. That's a little bit weird, you know, getting there and, and they, the way they treat people is a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's not that di- much different from South Africa. So. Except okay. you're not gonna bry as much, and they don't have yeah. good brandy. So <laughs> you should definitely take a bottle or two with you if you want to go there. <laughs> And um, were you given clothes to work in in the factory, or were you have to wear your own clothes? Uh, they gave me safety shoes uh, that are mandatory for the insurance. Uh, but no, I didn't. Uh, they don't. Uh, some actually, the, the the kitchen staff they get a specific uniform that they have to wear or coat that they okay. have to wear. But you can wear whatever you want to wear. Okay, so it's not like they give you overalls or. <laughs> yeah, but like, don't go dressed up and stuff to the factory. You know, like you're gonna ruin your clothes, definitely. Yeah, you, you should take some. Work. You should take some clothes that uh, some old clothes that you know are gonna get very for you to work with. Okay. Um. So, did you work at the factory, your Volker Woods, where you're not allowed to um, do different jobs? No, you can uh, you can request to go do a different job. Uh, I wanted to stay in the factory the whole time because I love the people that work there with me. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the, not not the volunteers because you know, I was there for the longest uh, of the people that I met there. Um, I, I worked in the factory for almost all the seven months that I was there. But uh, sometimes they uh, they need me if they need people uh, to go uh, do something else, you know. Okay. Uh, I once went to go work in a medical factory. We we just uh, yeah we just move stuff uh, and yeah and I and I had pool duty for like two or three weeks. Uh, then you basically just go have to clean up the pool area and go um, clean the toilets there and stuff. But yeah, that was uh, was actually okay. really fun being in the pool area. And just chill mm-hmm. with the lifeboard all day long. Yeah. Uh, okay. What did you think of um, all the different people that you worked with? Like, what did you think of all the different food and people that you met over there? The strange. People are fine. The normal people, you know, a uh, bit of a different, little bit of a different culture than ours, as I said. But um, no, they're fun people. Nice. They, most of them are friendly. Uh, actually, it's funny. Some of the older people in the kibbutz don't like, <laughs> don't like the other people coming in. But um, the rest of the people are fine with it, you know. Especially the younger people. There's a lot of younger people in the kibbutz. Okay. And uh, well- want to experience new things and new people. Yeah, they were very welcoming. Um, yeah, I met a I met a lot of uh, younger people in the kibbutz and became friends with them and had a good time. Yeah, and uh, is there anything different about their food? What was something that you never tried before, but you like it? You know what? It it took me a few weeks to get used to it. Um, uh, not all of the the food is like to my tasting, uh, okay. but a lot of it I love. Like I eat hummus now, even at home now. I still I still love hummus because I eat hummus all the time. Um, but yeah, they've got some. If you want to go outside of the kibbutz, mm-hmm. uh, kibbutz is, uh, and like Tel Aviv has amazing restaurants. With some of the best food that I've ate ever. You know. So, oh. Okay, and then do you have any advice that you would give to other people that are looking to start their kibbutz journey? Uh, yeah, just keep an open mind, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, if you get there and like it's, uh, there's always going to be a few conflicting personalities, but just know if, if you don't like someone, it's probably just because you don't know them well enough. You know, just yeah. get to know the people and then uh, yeah, you'll make friends for life. 
trust me. Like I, I get messages every week from from some of the people there that I met. Uh, so yeah. Uh, are you planning to go visit um, any of your friends that you met on the kibbutz? Yeah, I'm definitely planning to going uh, to Australia and uh, to uh, Colombia, definitely. But uh, yeah, that's it's going to be a while now with the coronavirus and everything. But yeah, definitely yeah. going. Okay, well, thanks for sharing a bit of your kibbutz story with us today. And okay, great stuff. Also, watching. <laughs> Remember to like the video and subscribe below. Bye.